Hello, this is AIN TV. I'm Charles Alcock. Now, helicopters like this one deliver a very high degree of operational flexibility in terms of where they can land and take off. But for the pilots who fly them, that can mean dealing with challenging terrain and obstacles that are even more difficult to cope with in reduced visibility operations. That's why we've come here to Morristown in New Jersey to find out what Honeywell is trying to do by bringing its synthetic vision technology from the fixed wing environment into a helicopter cockpit. Honeywell's engineers have been working for many months now to adjust the synthetic vision technology for its new environment in the helicopter. We spoke to Trisha Vervas from Honeywell's Advanced Technology Group to ask her what are the main goals here and what challenges have they faced? We really think that the helicopter environment is ripe for this technology. It's safety that we're trying to promote. We're a safety company in providing that kind of technology to helicopter pilots that unfortunately have very high accident rates. It solves a problem that needs to be solved. But then you have these real unique ways a helicopter works. You know, you don't see fixed wing aircrafts flying sideways down runways. You don't see uh, the aircraft coming in with these high pitch attitudes, but the path actually is moving downward. It's very large differential between those two. So we need to accommodate the display to enable you to actually do that. And then there's a lot of things that helicopter pilots care about that fixed wing pilots don't. You have obstacles and you know up and away for for a fixed wing, and they don't care at 30,000 feet that an obstacle down there is a bridge, or they don't care. They they're well above it. But helicopter pilots, they use this information. They really want to know what's out in front of them. Not only when they can see out in front of them, but especially at night, night VFR conditions or low visibility. Nice part of synthetic vision is it's always that bright sunny day outside. Honeywell chief test pilot Mark Lajeunesse has flown the SVS system in many fixed wing aircraft but in recent weeks he's had a chance to get used to how it can function in a rotorcraft like this. The pilot gains a much greater situational awareness specifically in poor weather or in night operations. What we've studied is pilots we have a high sea fit accident rate with helicopters. We all acknowledge this. The problem is how do we assist the pilot into avoiding those kind of situations. Also, how do we help pilots in instrument operations, specifically landing at oil rigs, hospital heliports, those kind of operations where they might be in highly congested, obstacle-rich environment and increase the safety margin for the pilot. AIN's Randy Padfield has had the chance to have a flight demonstration of the SVS in this Augusta Westland AW139 aircraft. Now, he's a helicopter pilot seeing the system for the first time in a helicopter environment. It did seem strange, and it did take me a while to get used to it. And I have to be honest, I didn't feel totally used to it even after the flight. But there were a couple things, important parts of it, that I did find uh, I could understand relatively quickly. And the first one was the flight path marker, which is on the uh, the both displays. There was actually two displays, and I'll get to that in a second. But the flight path marker, which actually shows your traje the trajectory of the helicopter, uh, so that if you're descending, you can decide whether to use a collective or use uh, the cyclic to bring yourself back up to level flight. And it also, you know, applies into turns and in climbs as well. And I found that quite innovative. Uh, Mark explained how it worked to me, and that was very helpful. The other part of it is we could switch the display between a synthetic vision system, the SVS, and a combined vision system which added the infrared uh, display to the SVS as well. And it's infrared by uh, MaxViz, but it could be any company's particular infrared. And it was quite remarkable to see the addition of infrared, even in, in daylight, into how much more information from the terrain database uh, would be, was added, and I found that uh, extraordinary. So, Randy, in the past, you've flown helicopters in very challenging conditions, in, in bad weather in the North Sea, you've flown around New York City with all its buildings. Uh, in retrospect, if you'd had this sort of technology to use then, how much of an advantage would it have given you? I think it would have been a huge advantage uh, in, in both locations, uh, nor both the North Sea and it, around the New York area. And I was very much reminded of that when we flew up the Hudson, which was the same route that we used to take from Atlantic City to 
uh, the Wall Street heliport, and uh, uh, we did it in some very bad conditions sometimes, very close to you know needing to file for an IFR clearance. So, but we were still visual, and this would have been just a fantastic uh, addition, the synthetic vision and the IFR uh, vision as well for us. And also North Sea, the same thing. It would have been a much safer operation than, than what we did. We did it, but uh, you know there were times where you got worried about it. Honeywell tells us that before this year is complete, from an engineering point of view, it will have the system where it wants it to be. The next step for Honeywell will be to decide exactly how and when to take this into production. But their team has told us that there's no good reason why this couldn't be in operation within two or three years from now. So for AIN TV, I'm Charles Alcock, and thank you for watching.